Welcome to this week's Pertin Vispas topic, Tourism Businesses and the Post-Pandemic Era, a Maze for Survival. I am Professor Andreas Sins, Dean of the Faculty of Business of Christian University, Malaysia. The race for a pharmaceutical remedy to curb the infections and to stop the worldwide spread of this new coronavirus unfolds with its own timeline. One year ago, only the hard-boiled optimists subscribed to the prospects that by the end of 2020, nations can start with a proven vaccination plan. What appears to be an amazing achievement from a research and develop development point of view generates serious concerns, particularly from the affected sectors like the performing arts and the hospitality and the leisure industries. Unfortunately, the pace of relaxing restrictions for moving people and the implied recovery of the economy is a different one compared to the rollout of the vaccines in countries around the globe. While some destinations and regions try to prepare the partial reopening and the negotiations of so-called travel bubbles already for last year, the pandemic comes back with the second or third wave and hopes for, recover, for overcoming the economic downturn after one year vacation. Consequently, the question of how long can businesses in the leisure and tourism sector survive with almost no revenue became most pressing. And second urgent, regaining confidence from the demand side that traveling is not much a different risk like it was before the COVID time. Today, I invited two experts from Sarawak to share hands-on insights about how much the sector is in need of rapid normalization of the pandemic situation. I asked John Teo from Merit Hotel Miri. He is a member of our industry advisory board of the Curtin Faculty of uh, Business and more importantly, the chairman of the Malaysia Association of Hotels, Sarawak Chapter. He could not join today our virtual studio, but sent me a very detailed summary of different proposals the association submitted to the federal government just recently. Seasonal variations in demand and fluctuating occupancy rates are nothing shocking for the hospitality sector. It's almost business as usual. However, if demand levels are constantly below break even, the question of economic sustainability becomes extremely urgent. Federal, but also local governments and administrations are called to assist in covering unavoidable expenditures through, for example, wage subsidies, temporary reduction of utility prices, flexible arrangements for loans and rent, and waivers for certain tax types. Employees are the most valuable asset in the service industries. We all know that. About 60% of the employees of the hospitality sector here in Sarawak are somehow affected by the pandemic, partly through layoffs, partly wage cuts and furloughs. However, all staff had to be trained into the new normal to follow the SOPs in place and to enable risk-free service delivery. These measures led to a substantial increase in operating costs. Also, Mr. Theo explained the average occupancy rate of the hotel sector in Sarawak is down to 15%, far from being cost covered. This would require a huge jump forward to boost the demand, but this will not happen in the short run. Many smaller operations are still closed. Some are already out of business forever. This, and of course, the usage of, as quarantine centers helps to support occupancy numbers in the short run, but it will need about one year or more to fully recover and to come back to occupancy ratios of 60 and more percent. Consequently, one of the necessary remedies for survival that Mr. Theo mentioned has to be an adjusted 
an adjustment of price levels by about 30%. So this was a brief summary from the hotel sector in Sarawak. My second guest in the studio is Donny Ten Yi from the Sarawak Convention Bureau. We will talk about how the field of business events are currently pushed to resume domestic tourism. So for, for our uh, talk about uh, what uh, the tourism industry can, can do and how uh, the, the sector can prepare for a situation of, say, call it post-COVID, um, uh, when, when the major restrictions, travel restrictions uh, and the SOPs are more relaxed and more under control, I partner Tony uh, Tan Yi from Business Event Sarovac. So uh, talking uh, about, say, the entire convention sector. And I think here uh, he is a, a, a leading leading expert uh, representing, of course, uh, government uh, initiatives, government perspectives on. So uh, thank you, uh, Donny, to uh, take your time today. Uh, and. Um, uh, I want to go jump in immediately into the into the topic, uh, as we we talked briefly before. Um, what are the issues? What are the concerns? What are the say the the, the measures that, that we can already not only talk but implement today to be prepared uh, for the next coming c couple of months? Hopefully, uh, to go come back to uh, a regular. Uh, say event uh, and 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 business travel business. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, you know, Prof. Andreas, for inviting me for your session. And then, um, of course, um, you know, this uh, last year, since last year, is a very difficult year for the whole tourism industry, especially for conference, you know, exhibition, you know, corporate meeting, and corporate incentive. So last year, basically, we have a lot of event actually confirmed in Sarawak, but we have to postpone to this year. But due to uncertainty for this year, most of the event has been postponed to next year again. So we have been, you know, uh, having a you know, frequent meeting with the state government, you know, on how we're going to help the business event industry uh, in Ho Sarawak. So that's why um, we came out with some packages, you know, and some um, grant. If uh, they would, the uh, local host would like to organize, you know, the local homegrown event. So we have actually two categories that uh, we have uh, approved by the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Sarawak. So for homegrown, uh, the, we call it tribe homegrown uh, convention category. So it's an initiative uh, by Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Sarawak, and also Business Event Sarawak in helping and support the local business event industry, you know, to organize um, small and medium um, business event like conference, you know, in Sarawak. For this, for this event, it's very straightforward because now the border of Sarawak is closed and then whoever wants to come in, they need to be quarantined for 14 days you know, based on SDMC requirement. So we actually target minimum of 100 packs you know, for this kind of event and uh, of course, uh, we just need to have one day full, full program of this event. So this kind of event can be like um, conference, congress, you know, symposium, seminar, workshop, you know, whatever, you know, the, the conference organizer would like to organize. So this is on the conference category. But we have another home, the tribe homegrown, a corporate meeting and corporate incentive category. So it's also the same, but this category is straight away uh, under the initiative of Business Event Sarawak. So what are we looking at this category is, for corporate meetings, we're actually um, targeting 30 packs of uh, physical attendance with 1.5 days of uh, program. For corporate incentive, we would like them to have a two days uh, program with a two night stay in the local uh, hotels. So, uh, what is the benefit of us, you know, um, giving out the grant, you know, encouraging people to do this uh, kind of event? Is um by doing this kind of event, actually, we can help the business event industry, like what I mentioned, like you know, the hoteliers will have the occupancy, the ballroom will be occupied, you know, the restaurant will have people there. And then, of course, the tour will be having, you know, certain tours, you know, maybe the simple city tour or simple walk-in in the, you know, national parks, you know. All of these can generate the income for the mm -hmm. business event partners, you know, in Sarawak. But what we are doing now for this year is really focusing on local participants, which is local Sarawakian. 
So I, I would like to share with you, this is the mm -hmm. initiative actually uh, just launched by our ministry last week. Uh, wonderful, excellent to hear. Another question, I mean, uh, what is your uh, impression? Is the industry, are there other service providers ready? I mean, to also to serve, to, are they prepared for uh, you know, taking all the, the safety measures and so, I mean, to enable such, uh, even if it's smaller meetings, what is your, uh, say, perception and insight? So for this kind of um, event, um, we actually adhere to all the SOP, the standard, you know, set by the SDMC, the Solar Disaster Management Committee. So um, we actually check from uh, with them from time to time before we want to organize the event. So currently for convention side, they, are, they mentioned the maximum is 200 packs or 50% of the, um, you know, the capacity of the venue. So, and, and of course, when we are doing all this, um, you know, like one meter, this kind of thing with hand sanitizer from here, there, everywhere. And then we encourage, you know, pack lunch and, and pack, you know, tea break for the participant. To, to avoid them, you know, having uh, you know close contact. So they just come in to attend the conference, then they just uh, you know they can go home after after the event. So they we minimize all the all the contacts. Uh, that's for the conference. Uh, but for the corporate meeting incentive, there's another approach because it's uh will be will be liaising with the uh, travel agent and hoteliers to make sure everything mm -hmm. is. Here. What what about the, the say the attitude and the preparedness of the, those organizations companies uh, who previously i mean ha uh, organized such meetings are they now reluctant once they found out that uh, so many things can be done online or how how will you or will will Sarawak government you know try to get them back i mean this is i think a, a yeah. vital question uh, for for a every region um, any idea how to in um, give incentives to go come back to physical travel yeah so this this what i mentioned about the you know the track homegrown you know for these two categories so there's a there are grant provided for the organizer to encourage them to organize this physical or hybrid event you know oh, yeah. uh, so um just to share with you until today right after the launching last week in my head i only have 21 events 21 proposal um incomplete sound that incomplete so they are actually quite keen but for our conference side, right, uh, because it's under the Ministry Tourism, Arts and Culture, so they are focusing on these three topics. So the event should be focusing on tourism, arts and culture topic. But for other topics, of course, uh, we welcome them to write in, you know, to the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture and also Business in Sarawak. Then we'll see how we're going to help them. Because if, if we are helping them, we are helping the whole industry. Yeah, great. Uh, so I, I see that, uh, I mean, uh, your, your organization, uh, uh, Sarawak Convention Bureau in particular business events is is quite prepared uh, and you have uh, measures, incentives and ideas. Uh, business comes hopefully slowly and but surely uh, back, but we can observe that uh, confidence comes back, uh, the prospects good uh, through the vaccinations, but to stabilizing, uh, say, the, this pandemic situation so uh, and uh, uh, yeah it's it's uh, it's important to to hear that uh, also Sarawak government and the uh, ministry is uh, is prepared uh, to to really put put uh, emphasis incentives uh, on on this part of of the tourism sector so thank you uh, very much I've, i i think i mean maybe you want to add something uh, before finishing uh, but i think it's uh, it's already a, an interesting uh, scope and, and insight that you gave and shared with us today is there anything? Thanks, thanks Prof and Andres for this opportunity you know, for us to share. Of course, um, um, the next um, the next thing we would like to do is uh, maybe to have a roadshow. You know, uh, of course, Curtin is one of our uh, partner because we have organized a lot of uh, convention conference with Curtin. So we'd like to you know continue this uh, kind of uh, good relationship with Curtin. So when we have a roadshow, then uh, I will actually introduce this kind of packages and grant to Curtin. Oh yeah, yeah, so oh, great. Of course, uh, usually for all my presentation, you know, all my session, I will end up with you never walk alone, you know, bro. <laughs> no one should walk alone. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, Donny from uh, Business Event Sarovac uh, that uh, uh, shared his ideas, uh, professional ideas and insights uh, for, say, a time that hopefully arrives very soon post-COVID uh, where we can come back to to uh, 
a, a normal stable business thank you very much and uh, okay. uh we can yeah thank you bro okay thank you bye see you see you again. yeah bye. Many thanks to Donny Tangi from Sarawak Convention Bureau. He is also at the same time member of our industry advisory board. Tourism is a multi-layered sector which cannot be managed like a small production site or a huge industrial plan. Mobility is a key factor. Interactions with service staff of different business types in a variety of industries are constitutional for a rich and memorable experience. Last but not least, encounters with local people offer the particular twist why traveling is ultimately worthwhile to collect unique impressions and episodes. All these reasons together make it a complex challenge to find a way out of this COVID-19 maze. A safe and stable itinerary that enables recovery, employment, and a sustainable future for the region. Thank you for joining this video issue of Curtain Bispas on tourism in Sarawak and the pandemic situation. I'm Andreas Sins, Dean of the Faculty of Business, Curtin University, Malaysia.